too much to cut these conversations short, but actually I'd kind of more just like to redirect some of our conversations now and as we start our final session uh, for the day, um, for which you have me. I don't have to introduce anyone, which is slightly helpful. Um, so this is just, I, I don't really want to take an enormously long time over this. Um, this final session, as I'm aware that a lot of people have to scoot off on trains, and I'm also aware that we did promise everyone that we would go to the pub afterwards and continue these discussions. So um, hopefully, I'm hoping to finish by half four um, with this final session. What I would quite like to do, though, is offer you all the chance for five minutes to stand up, and I'm very aware that you've all been sitting down for about an hour and a half now, and if anyone wants to stand up and move around a little bit um, to get your legs going and your avoiding deep vein thrombosis. There's, there's <laughs> energy in the room. So if anyone wants to move around, if you want to, I also think it would be really good if uh, people want to switch seats with the people and you know, join different groups and, and talk to different people. So this, this is your opportunity to do so for the next five minutes. Then I think um, we should definitely be able to, to wrap things up quite nicely. So just to give... Um, a bit of, I think, before we can look at necessarily the future of BioBlitz, we have to look a little bit at what the way that um, currently I'm doing things from BNHC's point of view um, as sort of network coordinators, as it were. Um, so basically, as you all know, BioBlitz is a completely open source, um, and we have no ownership over any of the uh, events or, in, or activities that take place under its name. Um, so the, the role that BNHC and what I play in, in this whole thing is more of a sort of secretariat role at the moment, where I gather up as much information as I can about all the bioblitzes that are going on um, and share as much of the learning and the best practice that's going on all over the country, try and munch it all together and churn out something that is then useful to, to everyone at the end. Um, and that's where the, the sort of bioblitz guide comes out, that's where the website comes out, and that's the, the sort of things that we're really just trying to make sure that all that learning gets shared and can be used, and we don't all just keep repeating each other's mistakes. Um, what I'd really like to do, what we've done in previous um, BioBlitz conferences in this, in this kind of final session um, has been we've kind of got together and created a bit of a to-do list for me, essentially, to go off and do various bits and pieces um, to improve and, and to support bioblitzes. And, and it's kind of turned into a, a bit of a, what can BNHC do to, to do with this national bioblitz network? And what, I'd really like, and what I'd really like to do with this session is kind of turn that on its head and really say, what can we, as the bioblitz community, do? And what do we need? And how do we go about achieving that? Um, so I've got, I basically got three questions. Um, which I'd like us to, to do a bit of discussion with in tables, and then we'll do some feeding back. And I have managed to find a flip chart. Oh, Matt, Maddie was able to find a flip chart, so we can do a bit of feeding back. Um, so it kind of comes in three parts. What I, I, I think it's what do we need to do as a network to improve, to make BioBlitz more useful at achieving what we want it to achieve? I think we've already talked a lot about what we want BioBlitz to do and how that's quite, it's actually quite a messy area because we all want it to do different things or to different degrees. Um, so I think it's more what, what should we start doing, what should we stop doing, and what should we carry on doing? Um, and we'll take some suggestions from that to, to sort of talk about a bit further. Um, then my second question is, is more how can these things be achieved as a collective? So not necessarily saying, right, we need one big chunk of money to get one person to come and do this. How can we sort of pull these things together um, as a community? And what sort of appetite is there for that, for that sort of um, thing? Um, and then the third question is just sort of how sustainable is this current way that we've been doing things? I know certainly from, from my point of view as, as being the, the admin person with the spreadsheets and doing the emails, as the network grows and there are more and more people, it's actually more difficult for me to lavish that attention on individual bioblitzes and say, well, this is where to go for all of this stuff. This is, you know, we'll, we'll make sure that your website looks, page looks amazing on the website and we'll get everything going perfectly and we'll I'll be phoning people up and things like that. That's what I used to be able to do. And as we grow and grow and there are more of us, 
the, the resources of my time and the time of the BNHC team to, to share all of that is actually getting less and less. So I think what we need to do is maybe form a bit more of a web and have more of that interconnecting um, idea and networking, um, which is what really this kind of event is all about, is getting people talking to each other and bringing people <laughs> together in the same room. Um, so if we can, what I'd really like to do is start with that uh, first one. I and mean, with the big bits of paper that we had from earlier, if you want to just sort of flip them over, um, I think really just starting on, on those three things. So maybe if you put it into three columns and we just have, what should we start doing? What should we stop doing? And what should we carry on doing that's already great? So if everyone wants to begin. OK, folks, I think I promised you that we'd be out of here by half past, and I got carried away. So we're going to do some feedback very, very quickly. Um, can I have one thing from each table of what we should start doing as a community, as a BioBlitz network? There we go. Sorry, I missed that one. Uh, are we saying sort of hard to reach groups, sort of? So connecting with external organizations as well who are on there, who aren't necessarily, you know, where it's not necessarily, you know, you can get people from Bat Conservation Trust to come and lead a bat walk, but is there something else that they can also do, some other project that they can link with? Uh, that's not even a letter. <laughs> cool. Is there something over here? Yeah. The regional coordinators, yep, yeah. over here. Cool. So a kind of directory yeah. type thing, which we sort of, the BioBlitz website currently almost does, but doesn't quite. It's more of just a list of events with a bit of information and some contact details. It doesn't really give you that, that kind of, you can't really go and chase down people. Uh, over at the back. That's fantastic. Stalk our naturalists. I spot grading. Um, I think in, in, in a context where a lot of our earlier thing was about getting hold of um, enthusiasts. What did we say? Enthusiastic people. Well, experienced, more experienced people. Um, then sort of making that transition between um, the sort of non-expert volunteers and then the more experienced volunteers. Um, sort of is that, is, would that be helpful as a, as a devil's advocate to that as well? Would that be helpful or would it be creating that barrier again if we're checking up on people to see whether they're actually any, as good as they say they are? <laughs> Yeah. 
and, there, and there's, yeah, there might there might be something we could that, that could be done. I mean, there there'll obviously some there'll be technical issues about around data sharing and that kind of thing. But um, yeah, and the table at the back. Sorry? I think I think that's that's uh, potentially the solution. I think it also comes along with a string of things attached to that in that then you've got to come up with what are the criteria. What are what is the policing policy for that? How do you make sure? How do you check up that people are, are adhering to those kind of policies as well? So it's it, it's it's an interesting idea and would definitely worth exploring. But just just as also there's the, there is this kind of myriad of underlying stuff from having to from having tried to do it for something else, <coughs> um, which may or may not have gone particularly well. Um, yeah. As a sort of, so it could be a sort of opt-in policy, because of course there's no legal as open source. There's no legal right to say you can't call your event a bioblitz. So, yeah, difficulty difficulties to get on there. It's all a bit because there's part of the beauty of bioblitz is that it's open source and anyone can do one. It's one of the brilliant things about it because it means that just anyone can get involved. Um, but it also does have this sort of strange brand management thing attached to it, which you know, maybe hasn't been a problem when, when the network's been a lot smaller and when it hasn't been quite so widely known and is maybe could be coming up as we grow as well. But it's interesting. Um, I'd like to move on to, what should we stop doing? <coughs> what do we do that's just rubbish? Or, wait, or a waste of time, I think, is probably the more likely than just being rubbish. What are we, what are we spending too much time on that, we, uh, that is not working? I'm going to go the other way around now. So we go from the back. Has, it, has everyone started on what should we start doing and then not going to be I, th I, th I think what I mean is as a community. I, I, don't, I, don't, mean as, I don't mean me basically by this. I don't mean what should I stop doing physically. But I'm, I mean as, as the BioBlitz community, you know, what are we doing at our events that we should, that you know, we've decided are not a good idea? Should we, should we try another one? Should we shift down forwards? Oh, there we go. We've got, yeah, go for it. And essentially, there isn't. Right. Um, I, so it's it's yeah. controlled by um, mm. the actual time that the actual customer is standing there, mm. and you will keep them over that block. That's the idea. So mm. that uh, you can only <coughs> block the time into what for us only works if the build is on, mm. and there's a, a sort of a log board that's been built around the block mm. in there that can go and count the yeah. time for the block to be sort of standing on the uh, block that's on. Mm.
Not all of them. I, I, any, as, as I say, anyone can run a BioBlitz, and they don't have to tell me about it if they don't want to. Uh, the 86 BioBlitzes that we know took place this year, we found out through, we know that there are 86 through Google searching. Um, and all of, anyone who had any trace of themselves on the internet, we should have found. Um, we have a pretty good hit rate. I think it was 79 of those 86 events registered with, made some form of contact with me. We are the first thing that pops up on Google is my, internet, is my email address if you type in BioBlitz. So it's, you know, it, most people do end up finding and registering with us. Um, but as I say, sort of the, the, the open sourceness of it does mean that we, it's very much about anyone who self-identifies as running a BioBlitz comes to us and says, I'm running a BioBlitz. Essentially, we then connect them with the BioBlitz network through the online, we do the promotion online, we put them into the newsletter and we invite them to events like this and try and get people talking to each other. So then, and we send them the things like the BioBlitz guide, which hopefully they read and go through and um, pick up on that best practice and what a BioBlitz is and what a BioBlitz isn't. So it is very much a sort of sharing best practice role that I currently hold um, and BNHC current, currently holds rather than an enforcing or policing role. Next one. Does that help? So using social media a bit more, to, a bit more effectively, in a <coughs> bit more of a structured way. There actually is. There actually is one, and I think this actually comes down to something which um, I was talking to the table over there about as well is that awareness within the network of each other and of the resources that are available. So, I mean, it on, it's only been up there for a few months, but it's only had a few comments on it. The, and part of that is, I, say, I send out the newsletter, I, I know that only 30% of people that receive that newsletter open it because of the software we use for it. So it's, it's kind of making that, making that leap between there's only so much sending out, and it's getting between the sending out then once people are aware of the ability to talk to each other and not just talk to me, and then me send it out, and then someone else talks to me and I send it out, getting people talking together. Actually, it's just breaking that, breaking that link of, I, I, there is an online platform for people to talk to each other, but no one knows about it. It's a secret online platform. <laughs> So that could be a, a better form. Joining in with an existing forum such as the NBN forum, which has the check list and stuff like that, not just on that, but there's probably quite a lot of those that could be done, and the problem is that none of those people were available, and you're sort of back in to something which is in the actual what's involved in these things, but it's, it's maybe worth looking at various documents and trying to get some sort of feel for what is worth getting to people, because I, I agree with you that although having a forum for the BioBlitz network itself helps with that, the, the fact that it isn't yet another forum I think I'm, at the moment we're sticking with the what we should start doing, which is pretty pretty good. Um, I think actually I might just open it up to a bit of a free for all since we are now right on the time that I said we would go to the pub. Um, I, if we can just have two more minutes of just a sort of things that are working well, things that should carry on, um, and again thinking of this in terms of as a community, not necessarily just as um, what I'm doing. Because we never know, I might not be around next year. Who knows? That's not a prelude to anything, by the way. 
I'm very happy in my job. But um, <laughs> you never know what happens with funding. It's something that we're actually get, hoping to get funding for to trial in Bristol um, next year as part of, so we did Bristol 99 that Max was talking about, which was kind of lots of little bio blitzes all over Bristol, um, where we did bio blitz type activities um, on all of Bristol's 99 sites of nature conservation interest, which wasn't the term that we used for the public because it's not very helpful. Um, but, uh, and to continue that project, what we're looking to do next year is form something that at the moment, the working title is the Wildlife Network, which isn't particularly helpful given that there is currently the Wild Network doing lots of stuff with children. So uh, we may change the name. But the idea of that is to basically form a sort of young wildlife enthusiasts club, um, which is different from things like the RSPB's uh, Wildlife Explorers and things like that, in that it's a more late teens, early 20s type crowd of people who are, they are the already engaged, but it's nurturing those people who, because there's an awful lot going on, you know, in Bristol and, and elsewhere, I'm sure it's, it's targeted at children and people who aren't engaged yet in things. And actually we identified mainly through our volunteers program actually, and through feedback from our volunteers that there's not an awful lot to take you from that stage of being engaged. And it's like, right, we've got them. We know that, that they like wildlife now and taking them on to picking up extra skills, going on and going into the, the um, different things that we're talking about in the recording, becoming the next generation of experts. Yeah. Fantastic. Definitely. And there we are, sharing learning. And on, I think on that really nice positive note, I think if we um, wrap up, and I'll just say thank you very, very much to you guys for, for coming and getting involved and for traveling quite a long way, some of you. On that note, anyone who is uh, after a bursary thing, then um, do email us, um, either Maddie or myself, whoever you've been talking to, because essentially I forgot the envelopes today and um, we'll have to post them out to you. I hope that's okay. Um, I don't really want to end on me, my failures, um, but it's also if we can just sort of have a, have a big thanks to all of our speakers and workshop leaders and everyone else who has done something interesting. Um, we will, we plan to go on to a, the nearest pub, which is the, I should know this, I live in Wales, Clandoga Thrall, um, which is just around the corner um, and we can leave you there because as we all know, the best ongoing discussions carry on over a pint. Um, so do join us there. Um, safe journeys home. Thank you very much to our media and film team as well. They'll be putting up uh, films online. Well, we'll be putting them up online when they've been edited and uh, chopped down. If you said anything that you wish you hadn't, please let them know now. Um, I think the biggest thanks goes, well, we have, uh, thank you very much to Armada House as well for giving this, uh, letting us use this amazing venue and for the amazing lunch that we had earlier. Thank you to NHBS as well, who sponsored our bursaries program. Um, and the biggest thanks should probably go to Maddie over in the corner, who's been working tirelessly on the computer, blogging everything that we've been doing, um, and was the main producer for this event today as well, and has been working very hard.